I want to step back from the horrors of the attack itself and look at January 6th from a totally different perspective, the perspective of the insurrectionists themselves. Their own statements before, during, and after the attack make clear the attack was done for Donald Trump at his instructions and to fulfill his wishes. And it wasn't just that they were doing this for Mr. Trump, they were following his instructions. They said he had invited them. And in fact, as we heard, he had invited them. As one man explained on a live stream he taped from inside the Capitol, quote, our president wants us here. We wait and take orders from our president. A witness told the FBI, that Sanford said he had traveled to Washington, D.C. on a bus with a group of people. The group had gone to the White House and listened to Donald J. Trump's speech and then had followed the president's instructions and gone to the Capitol. Folks, the insurrectionists didn't just make this up. As Sanford's lawyer explained, you're being told you fought, got a fight like hell. Does fight like hell mean you throw things at people? Maybe. The lawyer added that his client, quote, wouldn't have been there if it weren't for the president. The damage done to this building is a stain on all of us and on the dignity of our democracy. The attack we saw had a purpose. Stop the certification. Stop our democratic process. Fortunately, they did not prevail. We showed you that the insurrectionists were deliberate, that they came looking for Vice President Pence and Speaker Pelosi ready to kill. When President Trump incited a lawless mob to attack our process, he was attacking our democracy. He was trying to become king and rule over us against the will of the people and the valid results of the election. What if President Trump had been successful? What if he had succeeded in overturning the will of the people and our constitutional processes? Who among us is willing to risk that outcome by letting Trump's constitutional crimes go unanswered? The founders included impeachment in our Constitution not as a punishment, but to prevent. We have to prevent every president today, tomorrow, or at any time in the future from believing that this conduct is acceptable. Today, we have to stand up for our democracy and ensure we remain a country governed by the people, for the people, by telling Donald Trump and people all across this country and all across the world that his crimes will not and cannot stand. These extremist groups were emboldened because President Trump told them repeatedly that their insurrectionist activities were the pinnacle of patriotism. Well, let today be the day that re we reclaim the definition of patriotism. Impeachment is not to punish, but to prevent. We are not here to punish Donald Trump. We are here to prevent the seeds of hatred that he planted from bearing any more fruit. As my colleague showed, this was not the first time that President Trump inspired violence, but it must be the last time that he's given a platform to do so. This must be our wake-up call. We must condemn it because the threat is not over. President Trump refused to condemn this type of violence. Instead, over and over again, he's encouraged it. Our response must be different this time. We simply cannot sweep this under the rug. We must take a united stand, all of us, that this is not American.